What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well, it looks like the ratings board have struck again, this time leaking out several titles that people have been calling to come to consoles for a little while now and we'll go over that here today. Also, we are going to be taking a look at an update for that PlayStation 5 revision that's been rumored with that detachable disk drive and how it looks like we could be seeing it here pretty soon. And we're also gonna be talking about Armored Core 6 as there was a new interview going over several details about the game and how it relates to the Souls experience that FromSoft has spent last decade plus building. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with High On Life. It's actually out now, you can just pick it up on Xbox Game Pass, but reviews did go live yesterday and it was a very sporadic release of codes apparently. Some larger publications you would expect to see reviews already up, just got their code yesterday. But looking at Metacritic, we can see it's currently sitting at a score of 77, but you can see there are six critic reviews. So not, not a lot to go on there necessarily, but if we look at the split, five positive and one mixed. I also noticed there were several people on YouTube who had reviews up for this as they did get codes early. And from what I could tell, one, the visuals themselves really, really pop on screen. They, they're very unique and interesting looking, I would say, going through it. But a lot of this game comes down to the writing and the humor and... If you like Rick and Morty, that kind of humor, it appears you would get a kick out of this game. I do, I do like Rick and Morty, so I feel like I would have fun with this title. Otherwise though, the gameplay is pretty much described as just an action adventure, first person shooters with weapons that talk to you a lot. So I'll check this one out on Game Pass. As like I said, it's already up. I'll download it, play it, and I'm sure we'll talk about it on the podcast this weekend. Also, we did have a bit of a surprise out of nowhere as Spider-Man 2 went live on the PlayStation Store and a couple hours later it got pulled down. Now there wasn't a much, much in terms of information that was there. It was just like the Spider-Man logo and the next game in the, in the critically acclaimed Spider-Man franchise on PlayStation is, is out, is coming up. And then that was it. So why were people so excited about this? Well, it did have wish listing as an option, which kind of seemed like a store listing completely is about to go up, meaning we could be getting information around this game here pretty soon. And in fact, I'm kind of thinking we'll see a PlayStation blog post go up first and maybe just go over some of the details. I don't necessarily know if they're gonna have a release date prepared because I kind of see this as their holiday game, maybe a September or October release, similar to when that first Spider-Man came out on the PlayStation 4, and then Miles Morales after that. These games have sold really well for Sony, so I'm sure they want a nice marketing buildup for this of maybe nine to 10 months. But either way, I think we're gonna hear something here pretty soon through PlayStation Blog, and then they'll have some sort of state of play event, maybe to kick off 2023, where we'll see the full gameplay and rundown of the game itself leading to its release later in 2023. Oh, and we did have Atlas just kind of randomly recognize Snowboard Kids. Well. Not necessarily a random recognition, but we can see this posted up over on Twitter with official Atlas West saying 25 years ago today was the Japanese release date of Snowboard Kids. And starting December 25th, you'll be able to enjoy the music of Snowboard Kids, Snowboard Kids Plus, and uh, Super Snowboard Kids on digital streaming platform. So, I mean, that's great. They'll have the music up so you can stream it, but, now I'm thinking, hey, can we get Snowboard Kids on Nintendo Switch Online with that N64 app? I believe Snowboard Kids was on the Wii U Virtual Console, so there's already kind of a relationship there as it is between Atlas, Sega, and I guess Nintendo. It'd be a fun addition there, but there you go. Atlas just wanted to remind us that Snowboard Kids came out 25 years ago and you can listen to some of the music to celebrate. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the ratings board leaking out a bunch of titles that we've been hoping would find their way to consoles at some point. Looks like that's happening pretty soon. Let's take a look at one of the ratings here and I, I think you can then fill in a lot of the blank spots as to the other titles we're referring to. We can see Final Fantasy VI. Now, this rating originally just said Windows PC, but now you can see it has added PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. If you take a look at the other listings, that being Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, all the same. 
It is interesting there's no Xbox version listed here because we have seen Square have legacy Final Fantasy games already on Xbox. And in fact, they dropped many of them just into Game Pass. You kind of feel like Microsoft would have shown up with a Game Pass bag for Square to have these titles just drop into the service. I guess it could still happen, but for now, we're just running on the ratings board here with PS4 and Nintendo Switch being listed. Now, this is a big deal because when the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters were first unveiled, everyone got really excited. And then it came up and said cell phones and Windows PC later on. So it went to phones first, then PC. Now it's coming to console and its release schedule was kind of weird. They did Pixel Remaster 1, 2, and 3 initially. They just dropped those and then they did 4, then 5, then 6 on PC. So it took them a while to get all these out there and they went through several issues along the way where there were problems with the, the font, there were graphical problems, the text. So I'm kind of hoping that the versions that go to consoles, PS4 and Switch, are the latest ones that I believe they've worked to resolve a lot of those issues that were brought up. The other thing I'm wondering is the release schedule then going to consoles. Are they gonna have to release release these in pieces? So will they do legitimately one per month? Will they do a batch of three and then a couple of months later we get four, then five, then six? Or do they just drop them all at once? Because to me, I would prefer to just have these all release at once under one SKU and they follow it up with a physical copy of this game. So you have all six Final Fantasy remasters on one cartridge or one Blu-ray. I think that'd be awesome to see that to celebrate the lineage of Final Fantasy. They could probably even do a really big special edition version of it. And to be honest, yeah, I'd be checking that one out just because there are some really good titles here. And the value I would say is there to have six of these classic Final Fantasy games, even at $60, we'll say, but have them all available on one cartridge would be really, really cool. And if you think about it, we have Final Fantasy 16 coming up this summer, and that would give about a six month window to release one of these every single month if they wanted to do it kind of piecemeal in the buildup to Final Fantasy 16. That'd be kind of a fun way to do it too. And then cap everything off with a physical copy. However, I am curious how they will unveil this. Will this just be a tweet? Will it be part of a Nintendo Direct or a state of play? I guess we'll have to wait a little longer to find out. I wouldn't be shocked if Square just said, hey, Pixel Remasters, they're going to consoles throughout 2023. We'll be releasing them and that'll just sort of be it. But we'll have to keep our eye out for this since they are being raided. It costs Square money to do that. I don't think they're doing it for fun. Should see these on consoles here pretty soon. Exciting stuff. Next up, let's talk about Armored Core 6 and several details that IGN was able to get out of an interview with Mr. Miyazaki and Mr. Yamamura. We can see this posted up over on IGN with the first question I noticed talks about will this be closer to Soulsborne games than the series has in the past? And I'm glad Miyazaki was very upfront here because this is a speculation that's been running wild online. He says, no, we've not been making a conscious effort to try to direct it towards more Soulsborne type gameplay. First of all, let me just make that clear. So no, this is not going to be them trying to bring the Souls formula to Armored Core. It kind of feels like, just based on what they've been saying here, that they want this to sort of be its own thing. They want to be Armored Core, not, oh, this is the Dark Souls of Armored Core game. So I, I do like that. In fact, in this interview, they mentioned they'll be keeping the mission structure. So you'll start a mission. It'll have a beginning and an end and, and all this. It won't be open world, nothing like that. They did talk quite a bit about the gameplay that they've set up here. For example, when asked about Sekiro, he did talk about how there is like a posture gauge and the idea with Armored Core 6 specifically is more being aggressive in combat, but you can still kind of play that defensive role back and forth, sort of a, a nice flow you'll have in combat there. They also mentioned that while there is going to be a large focus on ranged combat with missiles and, and, and guns and weapons you have there, there will also be options for melee close range combat if you wanna go that route. Now when asked about, I guess the changes between now and Armored Core 5, the biggest one that Miyazaki talks about is just resources in general. They, they have more money now to do something like this as well as just developers than what they had with Armored Core 5. And a lot of that has to do with this incredible run they've gone on with games like Sekiro, uh, the Dark Souls series, and obviously 
Elden Ring. I mean, Bandai Namco is probably just throwing money at their feet. Whatever you want to make, we'll go ahead and back it. Let's do this. We got you with the publishing and all of this stuff. They also talked about there will be multiplayer in this game, that through way of an arena. So you'll be able to build up your mech and fight against other people. But the primary focus currently is on the story mode. So I, I do like to hear that. It will be a essentially a fresh, new, rebooted story, if you will, there. And they talked a bit about the progression system, not necessarily an RPG system, although I guess kinda as well. Basically, as you go through the missions, you will get money. You will then use the money to buy new, more expensive parts for your mech that you can equip and customize freely. But it was a really good interview. I have it linked down in the sources if you wanna read through it a bit more and see more expanded explanations around some of this stuff, but from what I could gather with this interview and, and what Miyazaki and Yamamura were explaining, it sounds like it's another Armored Core game, which is great because a lot of people are trying to kind of turn this into it being a Souls-like experience, not necessarily an Armored Core experience, and I'm glad that they have kind of explained they're going back to the roots of Armored Core to see what made Armored Core Armored Core and kind of building on that in this essentially rebooted entry with Armored Core 6. So yes, very much so looking forward to this one next year, but also we have to see some gameplay for this to kind of tie everything together. So here's hoping they have that planned out pretty soon. Next up, let's talk about that PlayStation 5 revision that's been rumored with the detachable disk drive that is an interesting concept. I guess it'll allow Sony to only make one system and then you just buy the, the disk drive separately if you need it but it looks like we could be seeing this here pretty soon and we do have an event even coming up here in the next couple of weeks. First though, we can see this posted up by Tom Henderson. It says, small update on the PlayStation 5 that has a detachable disk drive. I've heard from two people now that the test kit is in people's hands and it works flawlessly. So good to hear that it works. It'd be a very awkward situation if people got the, the system and it just was not working correctly. It says, we should hear more about it officially soon. All right, so... Looking at this, if we want to try to pick out the next possible spot that Sony could do this, CES, I mean, CES is coming up. That's January 5th to the 8th, 2023. So basically just it's really a week into the new year. And we heard that Sony will be there in some capacity, but they're there every year. And at, at CES, all right, so this is the Consumer Technology Association. So what happens at these things is with this event, they just show off stuff that we probably won't be buying as it's incredibly expensive. It's more proof of concept, things well into the future that eventually we'll, I guess, get some version of. But in this case, it would be a cool use case for Sony to say, hey, here's the potential future of the PS5 with a detachable disk drive. Or they could just show off cameras and talk about, I don't know, PlayStation 5 sales and here's these really cool TVs that cost $10,000. But with the PS5 itself, I'm very curious about how the system looks, how it exactly attaches, and if that disk drive that they sell separately could be used with the current model of the digital PS5. Because I've been thinking about this, and really, the disk is just used to install and a verification check that you own the game, since it would need that to start up even though you have it installed on your system. Kind of like the CD key that we had back in the day on, the, on PC, right? In that case, if it's just reliant on the USB port or USB-C or whatever to transfer data, really the USB ports they have with 3 or 3.1 should be more than enough bandwidth for the slow Blu-ray drive that they have in the system or away from the system that would be daisy-chained to it. So I do wonder if that is something that they have already planned out, that if you have a digital PS5, you can just buy it and there you go. You can now read Blu-ray movies or even the games themselves that you want to install. And also, if we already have a, a disc-enabled PlayStation 5, can we buy this? and just have another disk drive. Can it be like the HD DVD that we had with the Xbox 360 where we can just leave a movie in the drive? And that was basically it for the, the HD DVD disk drive. I mean, really we just had it so we didn't have to keep taking our games out of the Xbox 360 and we could just leave a movie in it at all times. So we'll just have to keep our eyes out for this one. I, I guess they could also introduce it in a blog post since 
That's basically how they were showing off PSVR 2 for a good part of a year. Hey, here's a new version of the PS5 system. It's coming out in 2023 and you can buy the disc drive separately. I, yeah, sure, I guess that would work an entire write-up in a 60 second commercial they post on YouTube. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a new patent that was spotted that definitely calls back to something like the Dreamcast because it had a screen essentially in the controller. Okay, you needed a VMU to attach to it, but it was there, the concept was. And we can see these images that were found in a patent from Microsoft for their Xbox Series controller. Yeah, there's a screen on it. And you're probably wondering, why is there a screen on the Xbox controller? Well, as they went through to explain, they're kind of working into the idea of the controller itself syncing to a local gaming system, like your Xbox, of course, or your PC, or pairing it with a cloud-based gaming system, which we know Microsoft leaning heavily into the idea of cloud gaming, right? You can stream all the different games on Game Pass for the most part. You can have it on your phone with the virtual buttons, or you can use your Xbox controller, say, on your Samsung TV. That's another big push they're making, and apparently they're gonna try to have it on other uh, branded sets like uh, LG or anything uh, like that. So yeah, the controller is something you would wanna pick up if you're gonna take advantage of it. Now, the idea with the screen, obviously to convey that kind of information, it's possible the controller could do what Stadia's controller did, which is that it syncs up to your Wi-Fi router and kind of bypasses whatever hardware you have in front of you. So instead of syncing to your TV, which is just another uh, thing that has to go through to eventually get to the data centers, it'll just sync up to your router and just go right to it. And it was a way that Stadia worked to essentially cut down on input latency. And really Google had a lot of that stuff figured out. They just, they couldn't figure out how to run uh, uh, the commerce side when it comes to a subscription service for these streaming games, a full platform there, which is unfortunate because they were definitely ahead of the times when it comes to the, the hardware aspect. But I am curious if we would get a controller from Microsoft with a little screen in it, even though I'm not necessarily out here streaming games all over the place, be kind of fun to see what else could happen with that LCD. Would it really just be used for displaying information as to where your controller is synced? Or could we get some fun VMU-like effects where you're playing a tennis game and the little stick figure is uh, on the screen hitting the ball back and forth, mimicking what's happening on the screen? Or it tells you how much ammo you have in your, in your gun at the time. A lot of possibilities there, but I, we'll see. This is a patent. Doesn't necessarily mean it comes to market, but certainly something to keep an eye on. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked, have you played an Armored Core game before? Look at this, 81% say no. So I, I think this is great for Armored Core 6, mostly because the FromSoft logo is one of the biggest driving factors behind people being even interested in this game. But also it's never been a huge seller. The series itself, I don't even know if they've cracked 1 million sold for any of the entries, but this one, getting some buzz online, and yeah, a lot of that's just because FromSoft's been on a roll recently, and how will they adapt Armored Core to modern times after being gone for 10 years? So I think there's gonna be a lot of people checking it out for the first time, which tells me, yeah, uh, Armored Core 6 will most likely be the most successful across the board, the entire franchise that dates all the way back to the late 90s. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Sneaker Fanatic Television saying, I thought Advanced Wars released this month, went to GameStop and they said it had a placeholder date for December 31st, 2023. Yeah, essentially it looks like Advanced Wars just, it's been pushed to next year at this point. I mean, we're halfway through December, nowhere to be found. Nintendo's essentially gone completely quiet on the whole thing. So maybe it reemerges in a direct to kick off 2023. Maybe Nintendo just randomly shows up on Twitter and says, hey, it's out next week and just retail copies show up in stores and that's it. It's really, it, it obviously it's based around the, the real world situation with Ukraine and Russia and kind of the plot of Advanced Wars that they were trying to do here with Reboot Camp. But Call of Duty just randomly come, comes out, right? It's just no problem, move along, everything's good there. So Nintendo's kind of stuck with, with what to do here. And at this point to me, just go ahead and release it as you get into 2023 and move along. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters being rated for the PlayStation 4 and the Switch. Are you gonna be checking it out there on consoles? Then also, what about Armored Core 6 with some of these new details? And 
the PlayStation 5 rumored revision with a detachable drive. Do you think we're going to be seeing that here pretty soon? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.